Hi, everybody. I think we're going to get started if you want to find a place to sit. There's also, if you're in the back, you're welcome to come. There's plenty of space up here on the carpet, around the corners. So get comfortable. I'll give you a minute to find seats. Hi, thank you all so much for being here tonight. My name is Laura Henriksen. I'm the Director of Learning and Community Engagement here at the Poetry Project. I'm really, really excited to celebrate Elaine Kahn's gorgeous new book, Romance or the End, with you all tonight. I know, I know. Um, before we get started, I wanted to let you know about a couple other things we have coming up at the Poetry Project. Um, we just announced our April-May workshop, so we'll have chances to study with Erica Kaufman, Susan Briante, Yuri Herrera, and Eugene Lim. So if that's interesting to you, you can ask me about it or sign up on our website. We also have a lot of really great events coming up next week. So we'll be back in this room on Monday to launch the Steve Abbott Reader on Wednesday. Yeah, I'm very excited about that book, too. And then on Wednesday, we'll hear from Myung Mi Kim and Eleni Siklianos, which will be wonderful. And then on Friday, we'll be back for a conversation about Muriel Ruckheiser and Bernice Abbott. So I hope that you will join us for some of that. But now for tonight, I'm hoping, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to start with reading an Alejandro Pizarnik poem. Cool. Um, so this is called Woman with Eyes Wide Open. Life plays in the plaza with the self I never was. And here I am. My thoughts dance on the tightrope of my smile. And everyone says this happened and is happening, happening. My heart opens the window. Life, here I am. My life, my lone numbed blood resonates in the world. Still, I want to know myself alive. Still, I do not wish to speak of death of its strange hands. Pizarnik, of course, is not here tonight, at least not in the most immediately perceptible ways. So thank God Elaine Kahn, Bridget Talone, and Coco Gordon Moore are here, alive and with us, eyes wide open, together to celebrate Elaine's hot diamond of a new book, Romance or the End. Elaine, Bridget, and Coco each, I think, ask questions not unlike Pizarnik, about life and where it happens, about how to survive and who we could be if we do, about lying and truth-telling, not as static categories or events, but as acts of creation, as a story, like everything is a story, even as there are no stories here. Tell me a story that I can believe, Elaine writes. Elaine writes, when I tell myself a story, I decide the end. These questions about believing, who do you believe? Do you believe? Are you believed? Haunt the book like a shadow. So too, questions about endings, how to achieve them if they are possible and then what comes next. Both these lines of questioning I see as in part an engagement with power and agency against the limitations of normative fate. But before that, I don't know if you've all had the privilege of studying with Elaine, but I really hope so. You can and you should, she teaches all the time. <laughs> She's teaching at the project tomorrow, but it's full and I'm sorry. <laughs> for those who haven't yet, I will share with you some of the pearls that drop from her mouth like she's both the blessed and cursed sister in that fairy tale. She said, every word that echoes around the word you chose to put on the page through the rhyme of logic or sound or expectation, those words are all there too. I'll give you an example. When Elaine writes, I open like a blood. I also get bank, I get book, I get blank. It keeps going. The way the line and its speaker open or unfold complicates the binary of what is said and what is left unsaid, and in a way also returns us to the questions about belief and endings as they guide us into something more expansive. Each word placed as if to point to all the others only apparently absent both the black around the stars and the dead light that cuts through. And she said, and I'll never forget, don't be afraid to be great. She meant, don't think you have to be small. Don't think you are small now. Or as she puts it in the book, 
I am not too small to understand my mother is a pool. By pool, maybe she means God, and by great, maybe she meant brave, which is not to say totally without fear, but at least not afraid that what you have to say about things like love, death, freedom, the world, aren't as important as, and as necessary as what anyone else has to say, that you are no less qualified. I bring this up because it's good advice, and also because we see it in her work too, both how much and how hard she listens, and also in how much strength and courage would have been required to write a book like Romance or the End, which would have been a very hard book to write. Although it has chapters like a novel, the book cannot be summarized or paraphrased as a clear narrative, much like in trauma or dreams or in trying to describe a passionate desire or feeling or in love. There are no stories in this book, Elaine writes. Stories are often normative fictions. They tell us how, to, how it's supposed to be, how we're supposed to live. There is none of that here. Elaine writes, this obviously isn't a love poem. And I think whatever was a love poem, what was a love story or a love song? A practice of seduction, a confession, a lie, the whole truth? And then I thought, what is love? And then I remembered that 90s song that asks, baby, not to hurt you, but maybe that's just what babies do. <laughs> and anyway, who's a baby? And what hurts? Is it me? Is it you? Just a little bit? The book asks these questions and more, questions about violence and surviving it, about complicated things and things that can be really simple. It sparkles like a diamond that dropped into cold water and then you fall in after it and you swim away or drown. I'm so excited to turn it over to tonight's readers, Coco Gordon Moore, Bridget Talone, and Elaine Kahn in that order. I'll tell you a little bit about them and then they will take it from there. Coco Gordon Moore is a visual artist and poet. She is the author of A Sketch of Romance and Today I Hate the Sun. The proceeds from her latest chapbook went to the Brooklyn Community Bail Fund, and her upcoming book will help aid Red Dot Campaign, a nonprofit working to destigmatize the period as well as collecting tampons and pads for shelters and underfunded schools. Last year, Gordon Moore put together a group show at Rena Spawning, Spawning's Gallery in efforts of creating a space of affordable art and working to raise money and awareness for the Brooklyn Community Bail Fund. She continues to try and find ways to use art as a tool for reparations. Bridget Salone is the author of The Soft Life, which is available in the back and is amazing, and lives in Philadelphia. Recent work has appeared in A Perfect Vacuum, Pouch Mag, and Elderly. And finally, Elaine Kahn is the author of Romance of the End, which is also in the back, and Women in Public. Her writing has appeared in Freeze, The Brooklyn Rail, Juvelot, Poetry Foundation, Art Papers, and elsewhere. She received an MFA from the Iowa Writers Workshop and teaches at the Poetry Field School. She lives in Los Angeles, California. All right, please join me in welcoming Coco Gordon Moore. Hey, <laughs> um, very excited to be here and reading with Elaine and Bridget. Um, yeah. I'm gonna start with a very old one and then some older ones and then some new ones. Dreaming of James Vanderbeek. Last night, I had a dream that the actor from Dawson's Creek was held down and raped. Slowly, my body and his morphed together and a blue plastic sheet lay on top of me in the shape of a penis where my pussy used to be. All right. Gasping for air like a baby. I did not know, no, that one should ask before the choking begins. Uh, yes. Sometimes I'm screaming. Get out of me. But I have no idea who I'm talking to. Inside your blushed cheeks, dressed in my clothes, lives a tiny man with freckled arms, doing coke, and lying. Okay. 
It didn't happen. One, stop thinking that it happened. Two, you daydreaming bitch. You daydreaming slut. Slut, 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 slut. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Madonna, Madonna. You so soft. E, 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 E. Trash, 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 trash. Slim, 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 slim. You fade. You holy, 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 holy. You, mmm. You, ooh, ah. You grunt, grunt, you beautiful, sexy, 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 you breathe, 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 you sit on a mountain high, 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 you touch, 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 touching, touching, touching. You narcissist, you baby, you fucking tube of toothpaste, 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 toothpaste. Three. You love, love, you cocoa, cocoa, cocoa. Four. You should have asked, you daydreaming, you. Um, I'm gonna head into some newer ones. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, all right. Untitled. Love at first sight. I keep trying to reconnect with my slutty high school self, but I think all the dick trauma has made this difficult. I am so turned on by this wall. It drives me crazy. <coughs> Alone in this room, the stupid sea smiles. It was a while before I finally washed my sheets. I wish I could remember the way I used to smell. This next one is, I'm not usually so lonely. At the end of the hallway, in a basement in the corner, there's a trash can on the bed. The wall speaks. She speaks. The wall speaks back. It is ugly with its smudge. She kisses the smudge. The smudge bucks into her mouth. She fantasizes about love and what it means to come. Say it like a baby. The centipedes have finally left me alone. I don't miss them at all. You are so good, killing them, holding me while I cried. His eyelashes fell out. I say it like a baby. You say nothing at all. First love, pushed, even when I sneezed. He made me feel sexy, like so, so, so sexy, yes. When I had braces, he would come, always. Light shines on a book I want to read. I read a different book. <clears throat> One, when Haley was 10 or 11, she got her heart x-rayed. The doctors didn't see anything. Stupid doctors. Some other doctors had asthma, but it's too dark in here for that. Two, when I was 17, a pediatrician gave me Prozac. You were waiting in the parking lot to pick me up. I think you had the minivan or maybe the Prius. 
I'll never forget how funny your face looked. Three, Haley hated it. You wore that hat the entire time you were fucking her. You didn't notice till afterwards, and it made her feel shitty. Four, will you drop me off on the corner, please? Five, eyes shake entering rooms. Just have a few more. Um, things that will destroy a good person. Songs, music, other musicians, manhood. <laughs> you play the liar. I told the liar to fuck me. I miss my, oh, th actually this poem is for Elaine. I wrote it for her on her birthday a few years ago and she requested I recorded myself reading it for her. So there's a video out there somewhere. I miss my baby very slowly. Such sharp covers, told some people that you bought me things. It's not like that, but they mourn and I don't believe in the cruelness of painful sex spelled backwards is ex lufniop. <laughs> it feels amazing. <laughs> so does X E P P A. I know, very different. I am lying because they are the same, same, same. They are the same. Passion hurt me. They are the same. Stare at passion until it's wet. They are the same. And it makes me know too much about love because I am the love. I am the love who wants the passion to, I am the love, they're the same, 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 they're the same. Stare at me until I love, I want passion to surface. Stare at the link, I want love to bite me in a way that's the same, same, same. Somewhere it exists, losing. Passion drowned me. I as love melt into mud and everyone steps over, leaps, bounds. I am not free of your sleeping grip. I do not know what I speak towards. Something mean, a crook of sorts. But there are two and I honestly can no longer feel them apart. Do not separate my lips, for I do not know what to say. All I want is a kiss. Just one more touch and passion will let go. They're the same, same, same. They're the same. I just want to say hi to one, just one, 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 one. I think of it and I feel like a mother in the same, same, same. Can't you see how this could happen? And then my last one is another old one, actually. Oh, wait, wrong one. My lungs shake with loneliness as I swallow this cum or this glass of water. No, no, I don't give head. Go down on me, idiot. I did not come home for this. That's it, thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bridget. Um, thank you. <laughs> I love you. I read your book like every night. <laughs> um, I'm Coco. That was so beautiful. I'm so excited that that was the first time I got to hear you read. 
It was great. Um, Elaine, thank you for writing this book and making us all, make, having us all come together, <laughs> forcing us all into this room together tonight. Uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. I shouldn't have even tried to riff a little. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to read these poems that I timed myself reading. So we're going to get it over with. Um, I was thinking, the. I feel like babies already came up a lot. And I was having this thought, because I'm reading kind of newish poems. I had this um, professor in college named Ogan Yemi who would be like, she tried to impress upon us how important it was to have drafts, and she was. She said that um, when you have a baby, that they don't just hand the baby to you; they wash it. And she was like, "You have to wash the baby," <laughs> and I, I really can't even. Conf I don't know if that's true or not, but I feel like I just want to say that I have really tried to wash a lot of these babies. That they're quite to me, they still seem very messy. So, um, welcome to these babies. This is called. <laughs> Um, this is from a longish poem called I Like a Look of Agony. We get our feelings from each other. Accumulation of an ice so fine, I move it melting with a finger. Shapes occur in breaking, then are pressed back into same. The circle is the sufferingest. Each holy gong prolongs it. I cut it into lines. Very, very sorry, like toast swollen in the rain. A mystery, because you cannot. A thunder snaps enormous fingers. A mystery, why you cannot. Shake it from your frame. It held you down so thusly, light as thus, as meaningless, but held you down entire. She hustles like a thunder, worm of winter, worm of spring, any on her belly thing, tried keeping track of each possum, met, observed, or sensed. The perilous softness, a hiss in the midnight, neck of the city, fingering its chain, then slinking off. She wobbled, pink and silver bulbs in pieces beneath her. I watched the actions link themselves impulsively together. How like inside a dream where knowing does not figure, though I can tell you what went on. Punishment must not exist in any final way here. Or punishment is this stretchy non-finality. A man behind us snores incessantly in a loop preventing us from sleep. It's a loose and muffled sound as if he is producing an endless strip of lace with figures in it and scalloped edges. I feel my life go in and out of me. Like rabbits with that halfway attitude, cringing in their habitat, nervously beheading clover domes. Don't embellish absence, I think, right before I do. Obsession is an opal mountain, sleek and growing. I ascend it slippingly on my hands and knees. Adoring what I had not wished to adore, I lose again to you temporarily. Inside this concession, a perforation. Hole punched, a channel, a charming yellow mouth. When Simone destroyed what she desired, she cried, and all that was solid in her body streamed out, a pearl loosed into alabaster slime. July, a line of drool, a sickness that comes close to death and then relents, mossy ropes that bind the water's chest, the plucking away of the flower of thought, the eating of cakes shaped like genitals, I had to keep reframing my curiosity in order to be close to him. First to disguise my criticism in it and then to justify my continuing interest, which suggested treachery. I thought to keep releasing myself in unassuming snakes of air, the way a song travels at the beach. Pieces of seaweed suspended in a glum shimmer. He always said to be continued when leaving a room 
dooming it to be the only thing I'd expect from ghosts. Repetition and the odd metallic smack across the heart. The past leeches resolutely. A strange will knocks inside my breastplate, cracking it like a wasp's nest. And to touch it is to interfere. The heart water is insufficient. I write this over my private life. The morning dove's cry is slow and round, like a button being pressed. Alive I felt so fat compared to you. Repetition reinforces certain theses, read the stable I, I am. If I don't accept the orange flower, I can't be dragged into the scam. I'm hiding in what seems to be a rabbit hutch. Chicken wire cuts the world in hexagons. I see you in the cold mud with a daffodil neck and your daffodil head like a wet tissue. Admitting that I'm missing something, I expand. I break the chain. We all sing it high up in our voices, a floodedness. Feelings a good wire that travels up the throat. I hear a grisly, jealous kind of breathing and know I'm not alone. The body holds the feeling. The feeling hides the wire. A werewolf. Nothing happens. White scum eddies on the bank. A little liquor in the ear. A perfumed wax pours out the candle's mouth. We attended a hot weather party. The flowers were crisping in the heat. My voice purled up from the guts of my experience like row. Experience, firm, quivering pile with voice. We fuck when I begin to feel I have no body. Exceed, I say, and saying sit in contradiction. A yandering in the bones repeats, to whom do I impart this yield? A yellow smile by the light of appetite, thither did my palms sweat. Transmission from nervous he to me and slow, I came to understand the dark is fur for some. Year of the Rat. Revulsion turns my chest a sweating candy, sour and assertive. Each revolution laying down its stain, baby, 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 baby. A string inside me spoils, and I have no defense for what I would do next. An undefended turn a silver blue. Hiss and sicken on the bulb, the hot thud from light to laptop screen to window glass, an irritation set in loops. I asked myself, what did I love? I loved to make time go away. Year of the Rat. He had a wound on his ear that oozed orange blood. I tried to blot it away, but it kept reforming. Recognition's silken feeling. I didn't want to write it down. Young Franz, poisonous, raw, grief's insistent whip. A rough encroaching ocean with bird's wings sticking up in triangles like shark's fins that never moved, not ever. Forgetting is no small part of this. Let it dissipate into a whistle. On passions, on hotnesses fled. I thought I could protect him from knowing he was dead. Childhood living. I wanted to survive upon the things that you could pass to me. I loved the sprain in the thought. I loved the spraying inexactness that buried hesitation in mounds of sacrificial front notes. For this I had no talent, for I could not get lost. I thought that I would write to you about the day the foam had frozen on the beach, its pristine hesitation shivering, a picture of my mind, but then I never wrote it, for I could not take aim. I smoothed the chocolate prairies and ooh, I smoothed the chocolate wrappers into silver prairies. Maybe you've done this. Square and small. I accept that this is the face of the day. Its cost will be $1,100. When you walk past me, I wonder, should we lock eyes? We should lock eyes. 
and you can wash the fantasy, but not all the way away. Idiot means private person, I owe this understanding to you. Clumsy memory hole where I huddle myself close and wrap the flow of particular types of information about me. Reading and losing and brute repetition, a childhood, a diet, these chains are very flattering, piled in a heap. A brilliant sloppy mountain range that takes all night to scale. They judged her tears as milky, for there was something in them extra to the tear, an unwillingness, a thing that clung. Abolish woe, you cannot, and is it possible you like it? Like living with an it to fix, O oh, behaviors, ask the question, like lowering a necklace down your throat, heavy, fine, and cold. A slick service, the water spills green from the gap in the wall, or clear but virulent, it greens the wall. Isle for vagueness, isle for no, isle for bright crumbling coins of eyeshadow that spoke up in their dream and said, it's here that one can toss oneself into the shining pigments that reflect death so augustly. They really said that, breathing like a human beneath the house. I close my eyes to go there, but being there is thin. Possums have, an <laughs> Possums have an unusually full jaw. They are attracted to broken forms and knowledge held back from itself. Inarticulate, separated by images, adds, asides, some teasing, some surprise, knocking on the floor. It doesn't matter how fucked the honor, just having been selected makes my heart beat harder. A circle is the sufferingest. The nymphs, entombed in spitty chrysalis, dangle from the grass, tired of wanting to be like. We roll our light around to break it, the sun a pale gold plastic snack. This is a slit in the appetite, tic-tac, chiclet, cracking, queen size, dread, a mouth stuck to itself. Wanted briefly to be like Sarah's sisters, who told me how they stopped their feelings. But then the whole backyard was water. To have a separate thought, a thought away. Self-secreted, shifting, machinating veil, strawberry dropped on a January sidewalk, aggro, immaculate. Okay, so no more seasons. Um... Thanks again. And <laughs> that's the last one. Drag your arrow through my lifeless ocean. This is a Pisces one for Elaine. <laughs> An opaque face said, concentrate. But this part feels like prayer to me, so I release. He is on the floor, rolled away from his nature. I roll away from my nature, too. One upper. Licked lighter is the light conductor. Your finger to my skipping sounds, ripping it like static. A skirt is a joke that circles the legs. Something about what cannot govern. A joke is knowledge transmitted directly, hysterical. At Rowan's party, a weird translucent moth dusts us and I dream a little girl is dead. I can tell because she's holding an egg in her mouth. Later at the sink, I'm trying not to break the egg, but the yolk gets out anyway, running it under a stream of water so it bubbles up as it slips down the drain. Yellow milk. I feel the slackness of my mind. Try to have an original thought. I feel like I'm a plant with a bead of dew on my head that someone keeps wiping off. Fat magnolias calling me, then hanging up when I say hi. Turn away from your nature, it has made you predictable. I imagine that I pity you for something, anything, until we become massive, an ocean of ourselves. When pity floods the joke, pity the goblet made to hold it. Oh, your little goblets come apart. Thank you.
Do people want to like come sit? I f I'm worried people are tired of standing. There's you can sit in front if you want. Okay. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you so much to Bridget and Coco for reading. Where's Coco? Oh, thank you guys so much for reading. Thank you to Laura for that like incredible introduction. Um, there's good. Yeah, people really. There's like space in front if you want to sit. Um, there's. Um, so many people I love here tonight. It makes me feel really good. <laughs> uh, okay. So this book is, like Laura said, it's written in chapters. And I'm just going to read some of the poems from each chapter. This is the introduction. Romeo and Juliet and Elaine. One. We are gathered here to worship the American religion of loneliness. It isn't easy being this disturbed, but suffering brings women to God and I am not too small to understand. My mother is a pool. Two, love's commercial. Pale blue buildings in the sun. Maria says hello to Paul. Hello. Paul puts something in his mouth. It is the tone of an answer, a pure response, an answer tone. Maria turns on like a wide band. Paul wants to fuck the God inside her, something pencils in music, a skinny fish of sound. Maria serves Paul's emotional and sexual needs in exchange for pizza. <laughs> Three. I look up your nose as you tell me all your secrets. My laundry is allegedly done. <laughs> Yet, I am unwilling to return to the machine. Obviously, this is not a love poem. Four. You big dumbbell, bring me to life. The warmth of my heart is hard and unending. And this is chapter one, it's called The Pull. Linen. Every time I think of you, my hands work like a woman pulling another woman's hair into a ponytail. A state of grace, a doodle, crotch, seclusion, yawning, owning ale. God has called on me to wear this breastplate. I don't pay attention. I come open like a blood orange, red of evening, red of clouds as tall as palm trees whirled apart like hair around a drain.
The sea has worn me out. The sea has opened up a thousand different holes in me and I have spat myself in each. The sex inside a fist of grass. I walk around. I look at pictures of myself. At night, I lay my outfits into shapes of people on the ground. Tomorrow, I will be as tired as a god. And after that. Friday, April 17th. The fantasy of being murdered has returned. It lives inside me like a crab. I want it so that the words come flat and all at once appear you walk out and look off of. I'll send you there with my little tongue. Am I loud enough? Are you guys sure you don't want to sit? So the theme of babies has emerged. <laughs> so <laughs> keeping with that uh, attachment theory. One baby says to the other baby, look, the nurses are smoking. Look, the nurses are beating each other up. It is Saturday, and the babies are holding me. Arms outstretch the bods of godlets, expecting puts a seal onto the world, so I am not. What is an O? What is the circle of a guttural emission? What is O, O? Oh, 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 ah. I rattle like a baby with a bottle and a rattle. Do you think the reason babies love rattles is that somewhere in their softest infant brains. They know that's what a Xanax bottle sounds like. <laughs> Do you think I'm a baby? There are some ways I am not. <coughs> you dream of candy because you want yourself to. In another window, in a video, a dog is wheezing. And I am thinking about candy, about what I want to touch. I click on swoony like you, like every hour a unique, careening bell that breaks apart the quiet like a picture I look over and over everything I do is to stay longer and this is chapter two it's called the long month in August for Kit we woke up at 10 I brushed my teeth, I made breakfast. You put the dishes in the sink. We read on the porch. You sat in the rocking chair. I lay on the hammock. You kissed my nose. 
We walked to the beach. You kicked a ball. I climbed the rocks. You found a crab. We heard thunder. I skipped a stone. You stuck the ball under your shirt and said, look, you got me pregnant. I kissed you hard. The sky was getting dark. I walked into the sea. Romance. It's cool. It happens. <laughs> Don't worry. Airplane mode, everybody. <laughs> Romance. People say I love you. I don't care. <laughs> and I am never tired. Chapter four, my wild mind. You did not assimilate, which is the privilege of a king, or I regret having to abandon you, but I may never abandon myself, or is it even possible to have a conversation? Your objections, are less passionate than my desires. What drives me is baseless and therefore indisputable. There is nothing more to life than this. Sickness is a kind of clarity it makes you feel afraid and love to be alive. It interests me to be afraid. My claim is on the absolute. I never wanted to be free, only to be nothing. And to love, to be alive. Just like the French, my beauty is nourished by its own disgrace. I love when it's disgusting. Jealously, I wash myself. The sacrament of being held without affection. My only purity is in my failure to be satisfied. We will never comprehend this, nor what hinders you. The horror I confess, I cannot have you without being, and you know what I'd prefer. Everybody thinks that they are different, but nobody is different. The poor thing, I hope they say. She was born with so much venom in her heart. A wish to be poisoned or what I want to touch, I click on. I listen to a song you sent and think about your body, loud and all at once. A cam gif whines and whines. I examine my orgasm now and then there is a need to become something. 
Life is like that. You don't know, and then it happens, like a red heart. Your fat blood and its actual eye. Anything is adequate as bruises blur my knee, the air it glows around my head. Try to grow up in one piece. Wind the clock, watch quiet television. God, your mind is boring. Take a walk, what knowing makes you. I decided, I decide. You can do pretty much anything to me. This is called the stone chapter. All I have ever wanted is to be sweet. I watch his arms his face and is not thinking of his face. His body is what is the fear can you believe in? Fuck. I let him watch his arms. His face is not thinking of his face. His body is what is the fear you can believe in? Fuck. I let him Watch his arms. His face is not thinking of my face. His body is what is the fear I can believe in. Fuck, I let him watch my arms, my face. His body is the fear I fuck what you believe you watch. My arms, my face, not thinking of my face. My body is what is I fear and fuck you can't believe me. Fuck you can. You watch my arms, my face, not thinking is your face. Your fear is what I fuck. His body can you face what I as fuck I let him then worse and all believing what I let that I is this and this is what I get Unfastened by my fail, so low to speak, and wasted keeps removing me from me. To you who say my fall was justly wrought. Know this, I paid for more than what I bought. My body split to hell, so quick was stuck. Not you, you arm your body safe, you fuck. You lie beneath a sky I cannot reach and rinse my kiss from yours with sun like bleach. It's true. It's he who pulls me from above and you that left me there. Romance. Love has turned on me, and now I am its liar.
This chapter is called, I Told You I Was Sick. Only the visceral shit spreading from the crease, the gemstone cold, I fondled them, value based and oiling like witches and as earthly god, too sick from I remember later like a badge and even I had an erection. What to make of that? Paradise is a mind blowing you. Fate is immoral. It dumps on you. And you do not explore its bad as I wish you were a ceiling or a geode. Dump me when I look at you from every care. I cannot wait until I die, I should have said, but would not let you touch it. Romance. A silent expiration in the small hours like a man whose pleasure disenchants love ends fast and never reinvents like light describes a cone a nothingness that longs to become regular splendor or whatever good things turn to every day. Unfucked in the bed we fucked on. When you loved me, life was real when you forget me. Chapter 7, I Lose Hope. Women wear clothes to demonstrate their grief. Today my therapist suggested I try lying down on top of graves. She had a leaf stuck to her cheek. But I didn't tell her. I'm depressed because my orgasms alone are uninspiring. And the most money I have ever made was when I got hit by a car. <laughs> Vote for Bernie. <laughs> The reason it never rains is God no longer cares for us. Be careful what you read and who you love. Everybody says that. I look better with my eyes shut. Any effort, minimum, it's total less than me. I can't transcend a thing if I'm unable to desire it. Stay there. Allow me my emergency. I remember being in love, but not really. A pull. I know quickness, like the longer we lie, the more I want to drown. It's not a question. Plastic drowns me like the middle class. It isn't a release. Grass, a tongue, paper cup, a tongue. When someone says LA, I drive. 
120 milligrams, whatever. I don't love the fuck of doubt and on and on. Let me assure you, forever means wax, insomnia, blank as your name. Chapter eight, I do not lose hope. I told you I was sick. The innocents all dress the same. Their mouths open. Their mouths close. They flush and bleed and wonder where they are, happy to be leaving, hesitant and unprepared for the departure when it comes to them like penicillin. Are you pinching yourself? What I want and how I want it. That is what they told me. They were right. Skin is just like fabric and all violence is in defense of something. I lay on my back and wish. I do that now. I wish for good things, all the good, good things. Why not? Fabric rolls out like a cloud of paint to moan into a square of gauze. I don't know. And so I write about it. I care about life and the ones who never say a thing. We are in the hands of Providence, who is unqualified. There are those who would protect us from the possibility of good. I miss you, and I'm glad you are not here. The smell of water on hot concrete is more beautiful than any word. It is a merciful blade into the center of pain, the delta of what feels dull. I'm going to read two more. Romance or the end. This is a book about love. And it is a book about lies. Love can be a lie. But it is also always true. This is a book about truth. This is a book about story. There is no such thing as a true story, so there are no stories in this book. Without a story, there is separation. This is a book about separation. Everything is a story even the truth. There is nothing truer in this world than the lie of love. This is the epilogue, and it's called Somewhere There's a Nothing I'm a Part Of. Thank you guys so much. Mm. 
The status bar circles my iris. It isn't insurmountable or permanent, though boundaries do exist. You don't dissolve by going through them, and I won't. Are lovers people? What I mean is shit. Wept from the gutter is a kind of present of desire of the sexuality of death, like they control me into me. But I am more and other things. I am alive, so I stay up all night. Enjoying feeling sick with pleasure. I read Dolores Riordan's natal chart. We have hardly anything in common. I want to be more than anything I want. If I listen carefully to certain music, I can just remember what it's like to live inside the perfect closeness of another's breath. It seems extraterrestrial in hindsight. Dolores said, I'll miss you when you're gone. And I think of this while scraping three-day-old smashed cockroach from the sun-bleached wooden floor of my apartment. It's like the refrain, or the stain of the refrain. I don't pay it too much mind. There is real joy in understanding no one else is going to do it for you. I want so much long, fake hair. And I want to win a dance off. I want to be disciplined and prompt. I want to come by barely even moving. Desire really can be simple. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Coco. That was revelatory. And also, thank you all so much. Your attention was gorgeous. Um, I hope to see you at the Poetry Project soon. Have a great night. Get home safe. See ya. Safe. See ya. Safe. See ya. Safe.